time to worship together after a little while. Wonderful to see the surprise of many faces that we haven't seen in a very long time. I met a couple of people yesterday that I'd never met that have been part of the people who've built this community. And it's, it's such a privilege to gather today to thank God together, to worship the living God who's done the miracle of keeping Crossroads going and actually continuing to carry out his purposes all these years. Let's begin with a prayer of thanks, and then I'm going to ask Bob to read us of, from the Psalms together. Father, we thank you for all these people who are gathered. As my eyes scan across the room, I see many stories of your goodness in people's lives. Thank you for the contributions to this community. Thank you for the fruit, the transformation of our lives because of your work in us and through us. We worship you, almighty God. We are grateful to be in your family, part of your family business together. And we pray in the name of Jesus that this service would be an honor and a glory to you and be a launch into Crossroads' future together. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bob, would you read for us? From Psalm 126, a song of ascents for going up to Jerusalem. Some 500 years before Christ, the captives, the slaves in Babylon returned to rebuild Jerusalem and sang this song for the yearly feast. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Do you hear that? Sowing in good times, wonderful times, those launching moments, but sowing even when there's tears. Some of you have shed those tears. The reason I had Bob read this, because I didn't know if I could get through it <laughs> when I read it, because there have been tears that have been shed. There have been hard times, but we kept sewing together. All of you that have laid the foundations kept sewing together faithfully. And you know, that's what we're still doing here. The community that's gathered here all the time now continues to sew, even through the hard times we've been through in the COVID lockdowns and all those things. We continue to sew and be faithful to God's purposes the best we can. Now, the time we have here, we really are looking to thankfully with God's help, launch us forward. And we have a symbol of an arrow. You'll see it coming back in the, in the, in the service several times. An arrow has a direction, right? It 
points to a direction. We've, we, you know, we're pointing to taking next steps closer to Jesus, closer to one another, and not to forget that the reason we're closer to Jesus, to one another, is so that we can shine our light into the world. We're not confused about why all this is here. So that arrow is that moving forward, and that's we're continuing to celebrate the moving forward that's happened all the way through and the going on. We have uh, the joy of hearing from a number of people. Now, there's tons of stories here. I would love to hear actually from all of you. I learn every week stuff I don't know about Crossroads, and I've been here for four years. You all have a wealth of stories, but we're going to hear from um, a number of people who've been core in our community for a long time, including former pa several por former pastors. Kevin, of course, is here in person. Thank you for taking the effort to be here. But Dan and Anne have sent us a video, and um, uh, Jeff Hancock has sent us a video message. They all wish they could have been here. So um, for those of you that are current members of Crossroads, and you're kind of saying, I don't know about all this history, actually, it's actually more for you than for anyone, because it's not just nostalgia. It's a hearing the vision how we started and what the heart was, and actually seeing, I'm so impressed that we're actually on track with how we were launched, and that's a great joy. So let's listen to uh, to uh, Dan Steigerwald and Anne, who were here for approximately the first nine or ten years. I'm having a little little uh, schmooey on my dates here. We were, our minds were a little too full to do the absolute math this morning, so <laughs> something like that. Let's listen to Dan and Anne. Congratulations, Crossroads, 25 years. Woohoo! We miss you, and we're sorry we can't be there in person to celebrate. We're sending you our warmest wishes for this big celebration today. Well, one thing that was driving my passion most of the way with the Crossroads was this desire to embody the gospel to be a sign and foretaste of the kingdom of God in The Hague, and to also be an agent of the kingdom so that people that encountered us would understand the beautiful love of Christ. And I think we did pretty good with that. That would have to be the Crossroads Witch Project, which was a video project. And we filmed that in the Hoxabals, uh Scott Curley and Jack LaMonaco and I running around like maniacs and being filmed by Rochir Boss and uh, just so highlighted this sense of humor that we had. We did many of these kind of takes and dramas and around the office there was always a lot of laughter and I think that's just consistent with the gospel that. Oh yeah. Um, a lot of behind-the-scenes hard work. Um, a church also trying to be developmental, where we're moving into each other's stuff. Uh, you know, there was some healthy conflict, but that was rough. We had quite a number of turnover of staff because we were trying to deploy missionaries to other contexts. And so constantly reconstituting it since a team. Uh, working with 27 nationalities and all that diversity. Uh, it was a great kind of hard work, but it was hard work. <laughs> I would hope that the church would continue to respond to the invitations that the Spirit of God are giving to the community. I think of times where God did the remarkable, uh, our first meeting place had Krauspunt in, in Reisweig, which means the crossroads. Uh, the way God provided our, our office, the connection with the British school. These were all invitations that weren't on the radar screen necessarily, but God put them there and we walked through them. And I would pray crossroads would continue to be a community that takes risks and walks into Holy Spirit invitations. Crossroads, my prayer for you is that you would continue to be the warm and welcoming community you have always been. Welcoming so many people in from all walks of life and from all corners of the globe as they come to The Hague. Amen.
So they, of course, didn't uh, get up in the middle of the night to to watch this, but we will be sending him a, a, a tape of this service. And we just do thank you, Dan and Anne, for all the many years of sacrifice and actually answering God's call in the beginning to uh, step out. And I understand that the, there's kind of an outgrowth of an alpha course at the very beginning, uh, beginning of Crossroads. So... We have lots to thank the Lord for. The worship team is going to lead us. Let's stand and join together. Worship the living God. Let's fix our eyes on the God who has been with us for many years and will be with us forevermore. In your presence, all our fears 
Oh 
Lord, you are the mighty God, the one we give thanks and praise to. Amen. Thank you so much. I love to hear you all singing full out. I love that. It's a, a privilege to not only hear the band, but to hear all of us together singing in one voice. The, today, we wanted to make sure to listen to the Lord, and the thing that was laid in our hearts is to listen to have God speak through various people who invested a lot in this community along the way. And uh, I hope over coffee we'll hear from a lot more people, but we thought we'd invite several people. Um, so uh, Kevin Johnson's here, and uh, he's, we've, he was a former lead pastor after Dan, and uh, uh, okay, we figured it was about year 11 to 15 of the 25 years, something like that, <laughs> if we can figure out, you know, if this is 25 years, somewhere in there, and uh, so uh, uh, Kevin will, sp uh, will speak, and Caroline, who's currently on the staff, is going to be transitioning into an associate pastor role in the fall has been here actually since she was here with her parents in the very beginning, and has been on staff, I think, 14 years now, maybe even 15 by now. That's right. And Jack LaMonico, who's, I'm guessing you were here from around year three. Yeah? And okay. That's year three. Yes. Okay. Year, year three of the 25. He was on staff until about four years ago. Has continued on in the community as a and serving in community as a spiritual director. But we'd love to hear his voice as well. And Charlie Alman, who's been well here forever in various ways. <laughs> well, yes. And and been elders, been on the speakers team, and we thought, well, if we could be listening to the voice of the Lord through these people today, um, that'd be a really great privilege. So, Kevin, why don't you start us off? So I think it was about year eight, because it was 17 years ago that I came to a new continent, a new country, and. Uh, came to a church that had something my heart had been yearning for forever. And that is a church that had the fragrance of heaven on earth. And you don't know how rare that is. I work with lots of churches everywhere. And so many times, churches leave a bitter taste in someone's mouth. And here at Crossroads, one could taste and see that the Lord is good. The mission of Crossroads has always been, is now, and always will be to be that fragrant aroma of new life of grace, of the kingdom of heaven on earth. Jesus was asked, um, say, so what do we have to do to experience the eternal kind of life here and now? And he said two things, love and have the right creeds. No. Right creeds are important. My organi mission organization stands on some of the ancient ones. He didn't say that. He didn't say love and Believe the right things about me. Believing the right things about him is very important. Don't get me wrong. He said, love and love. You want to enter into the kingdom of heaven kind of life right now? Love my father and love one another. And I can't give you a better definition of grace and that sort of grace and love doesn't need some sort of counterbalance. That is truth. And so my prayer for you, Crossroads, as you enter into the future that God has for you, never stop being that fragrance of the kingdom of heaven on earth because the world needs it now more than ever. As, uh, uh, my name is Caroline. 
as Miriam said earlier, that I came to Crossroads when uh, it was first run. And my, my parents were actually attending Crossroads Amsterdam. And in the same year that they were moving to The Hague for my dad's job, Dan Steigerwald, who was also attending Crossroads Amsterdam, said, hey, we're going to plant a church there. Interested? And so from the very beginning, it started as a small group. And it sometimes met in my parents' home as well. So I've seen this go from a small group of about 15, 20-ish people to ebb and flow to a, the masses, in a way. And I could not be more grateful to be part of that community. And if I were to explain the one thing that I think Crossroads stands out, I'm going to kind of hop on the word that Kevin used there, grace. And, and the way I've seen it lived out in the people that we've kind of encountered over the past 25 years. And for me, that was a big lesson as well, that grace means that when I'm looking at others and when they're looking at me, that the route we take to Jesus, the pace in which we walk towards Jesus, and any detours that might be there or not, that is between us and God. And that everyone has a different journey to Jesus. The idea is, the point is, the goal, the, the desire, the dream, the wish is to, to every day to take steps towards him. But what that looks like, that is for everyone, it can be something different. And that was a big lesson for me. And, and another thing I would say is authenticity. Realizing that having found Jesus does not in any way mean that I, I got it now, so I'm just going to look down on the people who need it. I am as desperately in need of God's favor, forgiveness, and love now as I am as I was back when I was a kid when I first said yes to Jesus. And having that in my mind and in the foreground allows me to see others in the same way as well. And so my prayer for Cross would be that we would continue to be authentic and being real, that we're not in any way perfect or in less need of God. And, uh, and the grace, that it goes both ways. And the humor, keep that in there, please. <laughs> um, Jack, would you join me? Whew, my heart's already full. <laughs> 19, I came to Holland because I met a Dutch woman in Hawaii that I tried to forget, couldn't. She said, if you want me, come get me. <laughs> Little did I know the journey that would begin. We got married in 1990, the best decision of my life. Uh, immediately went into Dutch language school the most hellish suffering experience of my life. <laughs> and in that room, <laughs> in that room was Dan Steyerwald and his wife Anne. We suffered together. And that's where the bond was formed. Those bonds continue. And for the Dutch, for the expats trying to learn Dutch, Dutch is the language of heaven because it takes an eternity to learn. <laughs> I can understand everything, I just can't say everything. <laughs> the second best decision of my life was joining this community, being invited by Dan in 2000 to join the pastoral staff. And that began a new journey for me. And when I think of Crossroads, the values that, that the relational, grace-filled, come as you are, come with your joy, your sorrows, your questions. Be real and authentic and transparent. I've, and I've had the joy and privilege of hearing so many of your stories. What a sacred space, what a sacred space that is. As we prepared for marriages and baby dedications and funerals, and membership orientations, and when you're sick, visiting in the hospital, to hear the sacred stories and be able to walk alongside you. One personal example, and I ask permission, is someone like Morton Vinefort. He came to Crossroads in his gothic getup, black leather boots and chains and a cane with a skull on it. We had to teach him to quit hitting people in the butt when they said something <laughs> that he didn't like. Very first Sunday, what was Super Bowl Sunday? Americans know what that is. Met over at Kevin Johnson's house, midnight. Guess who shows up? Martin. We welcomed him with open arms. Martin has about, attended about every Crossroads event since. <laughs> He's become a part of our community. We love and accept him. He's spoken in my life, and I've learned things from him. And that's the type of community we are, where come as you are, come with your questions. As Kevin said, we learn to, to love and to listen. And that's my encouragement for Crossroads. 
to continue to be that safe, inclusive place where we listen well, where we're that, we listen to each other's stories, we become intimate allies who know each other's stories, have each other's back, do life together. And as we do life together, God shows up as we together just walk towards him and one another. So thank you for the privilege of walking with you and continuing to walk with you. I look forward to what God has in store for us. Hi, my name is Charlie Allman. Um, one thing I've recently discovered is it's really hard coming up number four after these guys. Because all of the words, all of the descriptions, maybe not all the stories um, have already been said, but uh, my wife Lisa and I came uh, to Crossroads at the end of 97. Uh, we'd almost been here a year and we're really desperate to find a church family. And we had one of those moments where we were doing a last ditch internet search and at that time, the internet was young, and so were we, and we didn't know that you shouldn't do search a long time ago. Yes, thank you. <laughs> we, we can edit that out, right? <laughs> but we didn't know that you shouldn't be doing Google searches when you're tired and you're slightly irritated with each other. But God came through. He showed us a church that was only like five minutes away, and uh, with the exception of about a three-year period, back to the States. Um, We've been at Crossroads ever since. Uh, two words I have in describing the community. Uh, the first is uh, genuineness, authenticity. I know those are two words, but <laughs> bear with me. Uh, and, and it quickly became obvious when we first met Dan. He remembered our names the second Sunday we came back, and he, he was authentically interested in, our, in us and our story. And it wasn't because he was trying to build a great membership list, but he really was interested in us. And, and I think that's one of those things that has kept uh, throughout the years at Crossroads. That you can come up here, you can speak, you can be on the worship team, you can serve in the back, but it's just about being who we are, not trying to put up a false facade. And I, I don't know about your church experience, but I am so grateful to come to a place where I don't have to pretend. I don't have to pretend to be holy or have a bunch of religiosity or use the right words other than religiosity. Um, having that freedom it just opens up your heart to what God has for you. So I, I really appreciate the fact, that fact that the authentic, authentic nature of this community. The other word is curiosity, and that's really my prayer for us as we step into this new season. Be curious about God, be curious about his love, be curious about his plans, both as a church, what's the next stage, but also as individuals. And, and we do that by looking at the word and studying the word together. We do that by worshiping together. Um, but one thing we often overlook is that the people that are sitting right next to us, most probably in this community, they're little God containers. And if you're interested in finding out about God, ask the God container next to you what God is doing in there. And ask, let them ask you the same question. And once you hear these stories Jack referred to, you'll, you'll have a new appreciation for God's love and his grace and his omnipotence and all the things that he's got planned. So hold on to that crossroads. <laughs> Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I, the last one here, I, we've heard from me actually a lot today, so I won't make this long, but I'm Miriam Phillips. For those of you who don't know me, I'm currently the pastor of Vision and Next Steps at Crossroads, and people say, what in the world does that mean? <laughs> that means that I have the privilege of assembling and guiding a collaborative team of staff and volunteer leaders in the community to gather our gifts together, leverage our resources toward a shared goal, the same goals we've had since the very beginning. We've worded it in different ways along the way, but it's actually the same thing. Most recently, we've worded it just because we can remember it, is that we're a next step community, taking steps closer to Jesus, closer to one another, and closer to the people in the world that Jesus loves. And that's a worthy vision. It'll take us our whole lives. It'll take us our whole lives. It will take all of our energy for whole lives. I really, um, on purpose, 
we didn't talk to each other about what we were going to say because we wanted to kind of hear what God wanted to say. And actually, the thread that's repeated through is actually significant. I had authenticity on my list, too, grace on my list, too. And the reason is that the gospel of Jesus, which gives us that foundation of grace, the gospel of Jesus is a foundation of everything we have. And that relationship we have with each other I mean so much diversity. An international community, you have to stick to the gospel of grace and the essentials. We had a conversation about that yesterday. You have to stick to the essentials because if you're going to get legalistic, we can't figure out whose list of legalisms to, to follow. We all come from different uh, countries, different backgrounds, and it's been a, a great exercise. I, I was pondering what is, what's next? What is God saying to us? I think we've talked about resilient faith. You've heard that a lot for me in the last period of time. Resilience in, in faith looks like deep rootedness, but I came across the word um, grit <laughs> recently in saying leadership, grit. And I was kind of going, actually, that's another word for like endurance, keeping going and taking every step. But it's not just kind of in your own strength, plodding along and pushing along. In our case, we have the living God living in us, working through us. And it's it's the grit of continuing to be dependent on him. There's a discipline in waking up in the morning and not just look at my to-do lists. Pastors are as, as likely just to uh, do things in their own strength as anybody, but to do it in God's strength. Say, God, what if this is important? God, what is it you're doing? And we have the privilege of, of cooperating with God, receiving from him, but it takes a certain amount of grit to not lose our focus on Jesus and receiving from him and giving it out. And our, um, yeah, that's what we're doing together. I've received so much from you. I've got to really echo that as well. The stories of, of hearing God's work among us and the encouragement to keep opening our arms, to receive from God, opening our arms to give and raising our arms to praise God and thank him for everything that we have along the way. We haven't um, had the opportunity to easily do offering collections for a long time. And many of you, the regular crossroaders are finding their way to give regular giving through, through the bank, and that's great. Bob and I do that too. We have our regular ties and offerings. But I would like to encourage us that as we're thanking the Lord and as we're launching Crossroads in the future, uh, those of you who have internet banking, if you don't have internet banking or you don't want to do this, that's all great. Just spend this time really and pray. Just ask God to use our resources. But I'm encouraging all of us who have internet banking on our phone to use the ticky code that's in the back of the, some chairs. There's some extra um, QR codes around day. Do you have those somewhere? in the back, if anybody doesn't have a QR code, or if you have bank, and, and it doesn't have to be a big gift, but if you can make a symbolic gift and say, I'm part, I'm part of, of what needs to be done uh, here in Crossroads. And let's, um, I've, I've made a mistake. <laughs> I made a mistake because we're supposed to see one more video. <laughs> I think what we need to do is back up. I told them I was likely to do this, and I did it. Um, here we go. We're gonna we're gonna hear from Jeff, and then we're going to we're gonna do the ticky thing. So you can have it in your mind, okay? And that's coming next. The reason we really have to back up is because the kids are going to come up when we sing, and we're going to make a big mess if we don't back up and do this now. <laughs> okay. So Jeff has given us a word. I'm sorry, I got this out of sequence. Jeff was here after Kevin. Okay, so year, what? Um, what did we say? Um, 13 to 18 something out, out of 25, something like that. Our best guess. Somewhere in there. And he has volunteered to give us a word. And it was really a push for him to do it this week, but we're thankful that he gave it to us. Let's hear from Jeff, and then let's give her offerings.
Hello Crossroads and happy anniversary. Oh man, we wish we could be there with you, uh, but I am glad to be at least a part of the celebration today and really getting to speak for just a moment into these sort of core questions of, of questions of identity, of, of who is this sort of community of followers of Jesus to be and, and what is our presence and impact in our world. When I think about these questions, I often think of, of the Apostle John, who was really the only one who lived into his old age. And the stories are told of John that he would be brought into church each week and he would just reach out his hands, laying his hands upon his brothers and sisters, just saying over and over again, love one another, love one another, love one another. And of course, this just echoes Jesus, right? When he's asked what it is all about, what is the core of it all about, he says, love other people and love God. That's it. But there is a part of us, I think, that doesn't really like that answer because love is messy and it is hard to define. And it's especially hard to define what it's supposed to look like for somebody else. I think what we often want instead is you know, five application points that tell me how to live. And what religion offers us is a set of beliefs and actions and experiences by which we can judge ourselves and more importantly, by which we can judge others. But that is not the call of this sort of community of believers. That call is to love. And here's the thing, love is revolutionary. Love is disruptive. When Paul and Silas were, were uh, being sort of attacked by the, the authorities in the book of Acts, they were described by these authorities as these men who have turned the world upside down. And they did that because they were driven by love and a hopeful vision of themselves, of others, and of their world. But that action of love and hopeful vision, it was disruptive, and it is as true for us today as it was for them. Here's the reality. In a world of fear and of tribalism, where everybody is defining me and mine and gathering enough for my tribe, love is disruptive. In a world of of anger and blame, where civic and religious authority are constantly just trying to exert control, to maintain control, and to maintain the status quo. Well, in that kind of a world, a hopeful vision, a vision of a better tomorrow, and a community who lives in the direction of that, of that vision is incredibly disruptive. But this is the call of the church to disrupt the chaos, to bring a revolution of loving community. When I think about how that looks in the church or sort of the, or in, in the world and sort of the difference, I guess, between this invitation to be a loving community and an invitation, say, to be a religious community, I think about the difference between a cup holder and an airbag in a car. See, a cup holder finds its highest purpose and function when everything's going smoothly, right? You're driving along, you got your music playing, you got your big cup of coffee or soda or whatever sitting in the cup holder next to you. And it is all about comfort. It is all about enjoyment, right? But the airbag is an altogether different story. See, the airbag finds its highest calling and purpose in the, when everything is going wrong. In the midst of shattering glass and crushing steel, the airbag is deployed not away from, but into the chaos. It is deployed to, to insert itself between the violence and the vulnerable. Well, my friends, in a world of suffering, in a world of inequity and of violence and of judgment and tribalism, the followers of Jesus are called to be an airbag in our world, to insert ourselves into the chaos and by love and by a vision of a hopeful tomorrow to bring disruption to that chaos. 
So I guess my biggest encouragement to you today is really the same that I tried to say for the six years I had the privilege of standing with you. And that is, I encourage you with love, with hope, and walking together to go and turn this world upside down. We love you, and we miss you, and we can't wait to see you in person. So thank you so much, Jeff and Heather. I'm going to send them the link to this, too. We all do have a thanks. You know, I'm seeing as I'm looking out here, there's a number of you who are here today who transitioned out of our community during COVID and didn't get actually a very proper goodbye. If that's you, would you mind standing? And I would just like to say thanks. Would you be willing to do that? Or maybe just wave at us? You can wave at us if you want to. Stand. Where, where Tone and Hetty? Yeah. And several of you. Thank you. Thank you for each of your contributions. Thank you. You can have a seat. Thank you so much. Bless you on your way. I know there's a number of you trans trans transitioning out now. Do you want to you wave at us or stand? I don't see you right this minute. We do appreciate you. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you're in sauna. Yes, there you go. I'm sorry, I didn't warn you. But thank you for your contributions. Thank you. Bless you on your way. Former elders, former staff, current elders and staff, bless you. Thank you so much. Current people, this community, we're all investing in you. All of us who are here are praying for you and investing in you. Thank you. Bless you. Let's take a moment. Kind of, kind of missed our, our crazy little flow there. Let's just take a moment. If you're able to make a gift, let's make a prayerful gift. I'm going to get my phone and make a gift as well to Crossroads. A symbolic gift, prayerfully to give to the, the future of Crossroads. God, we pray, pray for our gifts. We thank you for your goodness to us. And as we give back to you in a symbolic way as, as well as a tangible way, we say, Father, fill us with your spirit, resources in every way, and uh, take us on, we pray in Jesus' name. Let's take a moment. If you can use your ticky, they're going to get a little slow start, and then we're going to stand and sing together. But go ahead and get your, get your gift ready, and then we'll sing.
We're really glad to have each of you here. We're going to tell you really quickly what we're going to do next. And then, we're going to what we so gaan doen. and then we're going to close off with a countdown. And then we're going to close off with a Okay. Afdelen. So, you're all here. Zijn hier nu allemaal. We, we're going to start with a prayer in a minute. We're going to start with a prayer in a minute. And then we're going to sing a song medley that the kids know as well. En dan gaan we een liedje zingen wat de kinderen ook kennen. Ja, yeah, and we have a closing blessing. En dan gaan we een zegen uitspreken. Then we'll do the 10, 9, 8, etc. down to zero and then go. Dan we'll count down. Dan gaan we aftellen van 10 naar 1 en dan roepen we het go. And as we said, we're counting down to us all going into the world and being what we've been called to be and, to be and do. Sorry. Want we tellen af <laughs> omdat we later weer uitgaan de wereld in. Om te zijn wie we moeten zijn voor de mensen om ons heen. And to do that, we're going to, after we count down, we're going to open this curtain in the back as a symbol that we're all going out there and not just staying in here. En als we afgeteld zijn bij nul, dan gaan de gordijnen open als een symbool van, kijk, we gaan naar buiten. I just want to say, it fills my heart to see the third of the church like this. Het is zo mooi I just dat de derde van de kerk. Beautiful. Dat het zoveel kinderen zijn. Dus en de andere ding, to make, ja, yeah, you can clap for the kids. You guys are great. Applaus voor de kinderen. <laughs> But to make sure we hand each kid to their actual parent. We willen wel graag elk kind weer aan de juiste ouder meegeven. When we're done with the countdown and we're going to give the kids a heads up, the kids from uh, three to eight, actually all the kids will walk up. Dan gaan alle kinderen straks na de countdown die kant op lopen. And they will walk toward turn towards the elevator loop richting de lift and wait there en dan wachten we daar and the 9 to 11 year olds they are free to go de kinderen van 9 tot 11 mogen zelf naar hun ouders gaan but the parents of the 3 to 8 year olds please collect your kids by the elevator en de kinderen van 3 tot 8 moeten even opgehaald worden door hun ouders bij de lift the kids ministry volunteers will be there to make sure that each kid is handed to the right parent de kinderleiders zullen het ook in goede banen leiden And you'll be offered a sticker with an arrow on it to be reminded that going out into the world, shining a light. 
Je krijgt een mooie sticker van een pijl om je eraan te herinneren dat je weer naar buiten gaat de wereld in om het licht van God te verspreiden. And everyone's invited for this amazing lunch we'll have back there. En we hebben een fantastische lunch straks. And for today, no stacking of chairs, please. We hoeven geen tafels, de stoelen te stapelen. I think that's it. Okay, we're going to do a short prayer. En eerst even kort bidden. And then we're going to sing. En dan gaan we zingen. God, we thank you for our past foundations. We're so grateful for the people who've invested, for your favor on us. And we thank you for the community we have now. We thank you for your goodness that we are thriving and have momentum and vision. We're so grateful for the people that you've gathered together now. And we pray, Father, that as we count down into our future, that your spirit would fill us. It would be your spirit that gives us Direction and protection and wind in our sails, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Okay. Let's sing. Zingen de kinderen mee? Ja, hè? Goed zo. this nation you are you're the light in this darkness you're the hope to the hopeless you're the peace to the restless you are there is no one like our God there is no
worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you.
I've invited Sazi Bennett to join me to pray a blessing in our community as we close. Sazi's part of our team and will be part of the team going forward. And it's our privilege to do this together. So Crossroads, please remain standing as I pronounce the blessing. Crossroads, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Are you about ready for the countdown? Are the curtain people in the place? In place? Are you to tell, jongens? Curtain people in place? Okay. Are the sticker people in place to pass out stickers? Okay. Yeah, sticker people are in place. Okay. Uh, yeah, Caroline? Yeah. We thought it would be kind of fun to count down together because this is kind of part of the team going forward here. Let's do it. Oké, okay, Ari, let's go. Oké, okay, jongens, we gaan samen aftellen. Goed opletten. If Ari is waiting for my nod, this is it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Oh. <laughs> Vier, drie, twee, one, go! <laughs> go, Crossroads, shine your light, bring the love of Jesus everywhere you go, and love each other. The kids can head on up.